Let's be honest, wind energy sounds like a dream. It is renewable, it is clean, the fuel is free, and it does not release any greenhouse gases. No digging, no burning, no explosions, just air, moving from high pressure to low pressure spinning some blades, and boom, electricity. So why on earth is something that sounds so good, so polarizing? Why do wind farms, especially in the United States, spark lawsuits, protest political battles, and even full-blown conspiracy theories? Why are we arguing over spinning pinwheels in the middle of nowhere? To answer that we have to go beyond on the good PR of wind energy and get into the messy reality of how it actually works, what it actually costs, and why it is not always the magical solution it appears to be. Let's start with what wind energy actually is and why people fell in love with it in the first place. The basic science of wind energy is not rocket science. Wind moves. A turbine blade catches, it spins around, turns a rotor which turns a generator. That generator makes electricity. Done. The faster the wind, the more power you get. That is why turbines are usually built in wide open spaces. Think flat plains, mountain ridges, or offshore in the ocean. Now here is the cool part. One modern wind turbine can power hundreds, even thousands of homes per year, depending on size and location. Multiply that by hundreds of turbines, and you are looking at a power plant that runs 24-7 without burning a single drop of fossil fuel. That is why environmentalists love it. That is why governments started pouring billions into it. And that is why wind energy now makes up about 10% of U.S. electricity and climbing. But here is where the dream gets complicated. Wind energy is not just about having wind. It is about having wind where people need power. And that is the first big challenge. The windiest parts of America are in the middle, the Great Plains parts of the Midwest, stretches of Texas, Wyoming, and Oklahoma. But get Guess where the biggest demand for electricity is? On the coasts, California, New York, Florida. In other words, we are generating clean power in the middle of nowhere and trying to send it hundreds, sometimes thousands of miles to where it is actually used. That requires huge transmission infrastructure, massive towers, high voltage lines, and often cutting across private land. Not everyone loves that idea. So even when the wind is blowing, the electricity cannot always reach where it is needed. Clean energy does not matter much if you cannot plug into it. Let us talk about the human part. People love the idea idea of wind energy until a wind farm is proposed near their town, or worse, near their house. Suddenly, the same spinning blades that once symbolized a clean future become ugly industrial machines, noisy eyesores, bird killers, property value destroyers. This is called NIMBYism, not in my backyard. It does not matter if the wind farm helps fight climate change. If people think it ruins their view or makes their neighborhood less peaceful, they will fight it. And they do, with zoning laws, lawsuits, public campaigns, and sometimes by electing anti-wind politicians. This is one of the biggest reasons wind development often stalls not technical problems but social resistance. This is where it gets ironic. You would think all environmentalists would support wind power, but that is not always the case. Some environmental groups have pushed back against certain wind projects, especially offshore wind farms and projects near protected habitats. Why? Because turbines can disrupt marine ecosystems, harm migrating birds and bats, interfere with whale communication, alter pristine landscapes. So now you have a bizarre site conservationists protesting wind farms while climate activists defend them. The clean energy movement is not not one big happy family. It is more like a dinner table argument on Thanksgiving where everyone's shouting and no one is passing the potatoes. Here is something most people do not realize. Building a wind farm is expensive up front. You have to buy the turbines millions of dollars each transport them, massive trucks, install them huge cranes, and hook them into the grid. That is why wind developers rely heavily on government subsidies, tax credits, and favorable regulations. Once they are running, the electricity is cheap. But getting there, not so much. This creates political tension because some people people see wind energy as a free market failure propped up by taxpayers. Others argue that fossil fuels have been subsidized for decades, and wind is just leveling the playing field. Wind turbines are not immortal. They usually last about 20-25 years. After that, they have to be repaired, upgraded, or decommissioned. And that is where we run into a lesser-known problem. What do we do with the old blades? Turbine blades are made from composite materials, strong light, and notoriously difficult to recycle. Many end up in landfills, which feels ironic for a green technology. Also, building turbines requires rare earth metals, massive amounts of concrete, and sometimes overseas supply chains that are anything but clean. So, while wind energy is clean in use, it still has an environmental footprint, just one that happens mostly before and after the turbine spins. That is not a reason to reject it, but it is a reason to be honest about the full life cycle cost. And now, we arrive at the weirdest part of the controversy. Wind turbines have somehow become a symbol in America's culture wars. Some critics claim they cause health problems they don't. Others say they kill all the birds. Cats in buildings actually kill way more. A few have even 
even said wind turbines suck up all the wind, that's not how physics works. These myths are not just fringe. They have been repeated by politicians, cable news hosts, and social media influencers. At that point, the debate stops being about energy and starts being about identity. Do you live in a rural area? You might see wind farms as big government pushing into your land. Do you live in an urban center? You might see them as hope for a climate-resilient future. Same turbine, two totally different meanings. So, is wind energy the problem? Not really. But is it perfect? Also no. It is clean. It is powerful. But it is tangled up in a web of geography, politics, economics, and human psychology. And we are just getting started. When we left off, wind power looked like a brilliant idea caught in a messy reality. It is clean but not always green. Popular in theory, hated in practice. Politically hyped but technically tricky. So now the big question is, can we fix the problems and make wind energy truly work at scale? Let's look at what is being done and what still needs work. Offshore wind, the new frontier. If people do not want turbines in their backyard, how about putting them in the ocean? That is the thinking behind offshore wind farms, especially along the U.S. East Coast. Offshore turbines can be larger, more powerful, and located far enough away that nobody has to stare at them during brunch. And the wind over water, stronger and more consistent than on land. The potential is massive. One study found that U.S. offshore wind could eventually generate double the country's current electricity demand. So what is the holdup? Well, building giant turbines in the middle of the ocean is expensive, like we need our own port just to assemble the part. Also, you are dealing with hurricanes, salty air, ocean currents, and maintenance crews who need boats or helicopters just to check a fuse. And guess what? NIMBYism is still alive and well. Some coastal communities have protested offshore wind farms worried they will harm fishing marine life or ocean views. Even when you put the turbines in the water, someone will still say they are too close. Wind versus solar versus nuclear renewable smackdown. Wind is not the only clean energy game in town, so how does it stack up against other options? Solar energy is often seen as wind's clean cousin. It works great in sunny areas, can be installed on rooftops and has low maintenance. But it takes a lot of land to scale and it does not work at night. Shocker. Nuclear power is the reliable heavyweight. It runs 24-7, produces zero emissions, and does not care if the sun is shining or the wind is blowing. But it comes with baggage, radioactive waste, public fear, and eye-watering construction costs. Wind sits somewhere in the middle. It is cheaper than nuclear but more location-sensitive than solar. It is scalable but requires careful grid planning. It is cleaner than gas but harder to store. In other words, wind is not perfect, but it is essential especially when combined with other renewables. No single technology can power the future alone. We are going to need a team. One of wind energy's biggest problems is not the wind itself, it is the timing. What happens when the wind is not blowing but people still want to binge watch streaming shows, cook dinner and charge their cars, enter energy storage, big batteries, giant flywheels, compressed air, even pumping water uphill. These systems store excess power when supply is high and release it when demand spikes or the wind dies down. Right now, energy storage is still expensive and limited, but it is improving fast. Think of it this way. If wind turbines are the lungs of clean energy, storage is the heart keeping the flow going even when conditions change. Wind energy does not exist in a vacuum. It needs a grid that can handle its quirks. Traditional power grids were designed for predictable generation coal, plants, gas plants, nuclear stations. You turn them on, they stay on. Wind, not so much. It ramps up and down based on nature. So we need smart grids, digital systems that monitor energy use in real-time balanced supply and demand and redirect power where it is needed most. In short, the solution is not just more wind. It is more intelligence everywhere. Remember those old turbine blades we said were hard to recycle? Well, the industry got the memo. Some companies are now creating recyclable blade materials, while others are finding ways to grind up old blades and turn them into cement filler or construction panels. Is it perfect? No. Is it progress? Definitely. Even wind's ugliest problems are getting less ugly with time and innovation. Wind energy is not a miracle. It is not a scam. It is not a magic wand or a menace. It is a tool, and like any tool, it is only as good as how we use it. We need to build smarter, listen better, and think bigger. Not just about turbines, but about the systems and people around them, because the wind is blowing. The real question is, are we brave enough, smart enough, and united enough to catch it?